Hey everybody, Nicholas Ward here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. As always, I appreciate you stopping by, and I appreciate the support. With regard to that support, I do ask that you please subscribe to my channel and like uh, this video and any other videos that you may find. Your support uh, will help me to continue to grow this channel as time moves on. Today I'll be talking about Federal Realty Investment Trust which is the only dividend king uh, of the REIT world. A dividend king is a stock that has increased its dividend for 50 or more years consecutively. That is obviously an amazing feat, and therefore this is an amazing company. But before I get into the analysis, I do need to give my quick uh, disclaimer. I'm not offering financial advice in this video or on this channel. I'm not a, fin a financial advisor. I'm an investment analyst with my wide Mirror Research. I work for iReit, I work for the Dividend Kings, I have edit the Intelligent Dividend Investor Newsletter, and I manage the Intelligent, the Intelligent Dividend Investor Portfolio. However, I do not manage client money, therefore you need to do your own due diligence, understand that all investments carry risk, the past does not predict future returns, etc, etc, etc. So with that out of the way, let's get here into Federal Realty. As you can see on this fast graph, the stock is steeply discounted. But before I get into the valuation, I do want to hop over to the company's recently uh, recent oh, excuse me uh, the second quarter report. They they announced earnings last week, and in that earnings, the company did raise its dividend for that 53rd consecutive time. I had been a little bit concerned about the company's dividend. I you know with a 50 plus year streak, you do expect for it to be safe. However. Federal Realty is a, uh, they own shopping centers, so they don't own malls. These are open air uh, shopping centers. However, you know, there's a lot of retail exposure. They do have exposure to restaurants. They have exposure to fitness. They have exposure to uh, entertainment. So they do have exposure to the sort of industries that have been really hurt by COVID. Um, but, you know, so with that being said, I was a little bit concerned about their cash flows and their ability to maintain the dividend, but as we uh, like to say, the safest dividend is the one that has recently been increased. And with that in mind, uh, you know, Federal Realty, uh, their management's willingness to increase the dividend, it was only one penny from five from uh, $1.05 a share to $1.06 a share, so a little less than 1%. But uh, any dividend increase in this environment is a good dividend increase, in my opinion, and uh, you know, now that that's out of the way, I do feel uh, much better about the company. I've owned it. I've been buying it anyway due to these concerns. Uh, but now that they've increased the dividend, I feel even better about it. And I have, uh, you know, I do hope to continue to add uh, shares of this company to my portfolio um, as it is beaten down. So as you can see here, um, the company has, uh, you know, sort of built its portfolio around the largest uh, metropolitan areas in the country. They tend to like to invest in shopping centers in the sort of what they call the first tier suburb, which is a kind of immediate to the city. Um, if uh, they, you know, they has a large population density, but it's not necessarily urban. And one thing that kind of separates Federal Realty from its com uh, competitors is the fact that this company only invests in, in uh, properties in areas with very high average household incomes. So they are sort of isolated from uh, some of the economic concerns that we've seen with COVID and also with recessions of the past. Um, so as you can see here, this company has 104 properties and uh, t roughly 24 million square feet of real estate. And it is one of only six REITs uh, in the uh, world that has an A-rated balance sheet with an A- minus S&P rating and an A3 rating from Moody's. I'll skip some of these slides here. Uh, here's the, the, we talk about the, the first, so they call it the first ring of suburbs, excuse me. Uh, but as you note here, they have an average population population of 162,000 and uh, an average household income of 127,000. And that is within a, uh, a weighted average that comes within a three mile radius of their properties. So they have, you know, selected areas that are surrounded by uh, wealthy individuals or at least well-to-do individuals. And, uh, you know, these aren't necessarily one percenters, but they are, uh, you know, they do have discretionary income to spend, and uh, there's a lot of them. So that is, uh, you know, what has allowed this company, that focus on quality is what has allowed it to uh, to become one of the, the highest sought-after REITs in the industry. Uh, scrolling down here, 
uh, we do see that roughly 24% uh, of their shopping centers are grocery anchored and another 35% of them are mixed use um, urban. So uh, we at IREIT, uh, Brad Thomas and I, we do like the mixed use strategy to sort of work, live and play all in one place. Uh, you know, you work in your office and your apartment and then your shopping and your entertainment is all there. It creates these little micro communities that sort of have uh, their own, uh, you know, self-sustaining uh, economies in place. We do think that is the future of, uh, you know, a lot of this sort of large footprint retail based, uh, you know, mall shopping center type real estate. And uh, Federal Realty has been, you know, at the forefront of that trend and they uh, continue to invest in those types of uh, properties. As you can see here, this is a breakdown of the company's uh, portfolio. They have 11% uh, residential and 10% office. They have 9% grocery store and drugs. 15% uh, are restaurants, uh, with roughly half of that being full service and the other half being quick service. They do have 8% uh, full price retail and 8% discount retail. That full price retail is obviously hurting some. Uh, we do like their health and beauty. That's uh, you know long term. That's that's got secular tailwinds. Um, we are concerned about the sort of uh, fitness and uh, experiential the six percent combined exposure here. However, you know uh, it is worth noting that prior to COVID, this sort of fitness uh, experiential, the restaurants, all these non uh, sort of retail focused trends, they were the sort of hot spot in the re in the REIT spaces. Um, you know, everybody was concerned about Amazon and e-commerce just killing real, uh, retail. So people wanted to see these well-diversified cash flows exactly like Federal Realty has. Uh, however, COVID has sort of, uh, you know, really put a, a large hurdle in front of that trend. But, uh, you know, I do think that COVID will be a transient um, problem here. You know, I do expect for eventually it's a biological issue. I think that we'll come up with a biological solution. And, uh, and therefore, you know, I don't think this is necessarily a secular headwind for this company. And I uh, don't mind long term at having these sort of experiential tenants. Um, this also shows the fact that uh, its top 25 tenants here make up roughly 28% of its uh, rent. You see some big names here, Whole Foods, Kroger, uh, Splunk, that's a cloud uh, computing play, TJX, Giant CVS, you know these are well. These are Home Depot. These are great names. Uh, a lot of these have good balance sheets. Yeah, Whole Foods is owned by Amazon, for instance. Like these are, you know, you can feel good about the uh, its largest uh, tenants and their ability to pay rent. Um, moving down here, this is an important slide. This shows the impact that COVID has had on the company's operations. Back in May, uh, only 47% of Federal Realty's tenants were open for business, and we can see as, as of July 31st, 92% uh, of them are in some way, shape, or form. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're operating at 100% capacity or 100% uh, you know traditional hours, but they are open and therefore uh, you know generating sales and theoretically uh, you know putting themselves in a position to pay rent. Back in April, we saw 65% rent collection from Federal Realty, and that has improved, uh, you know, month over month here. And in July, we're now at 76% uh, due to the 92% businesses opened. I do expect for this to continue to rise. We also see that the company has uh, negotiated bills to for deferred rent with quite a few of its tenants, and it expects to collect uh, roughly 92% of its deferred rent by the end of next year. So. Uh, you know, over time, we do expect these companies' uh, cash flows to increase. This is a, a useful graph for investors and something I liked to see. It shows the percentage of uh, ABR, which is their rent collection uh, of the portfolio. So, you know, banks and financial services equal 4%, grocery and jug 9%, and so on and so forth. And then it shows the collection rate from top to bottom. So obviously, you know, you don't like seeing restaurants here at roughly 15% of the rent portfolio only collecting 54%. But you do see that for the most part, their worst rent collection, um, you know, um, sort of areas of their portfolio do have some of the lowest ABR percentages. Uh, and, uh, you know, this also speaks, you know, we knew the fitness was bad. We knew experience was bad. Full price retail kind of surprised me. I didn't expect that to be so bad. But, uh, you know, just from an informational standpoint with regard to how 
the uh, the retail industry is faring. This is a very uh, educational graph, and you know I I think it's it's probably worthwhile for you to pause the video here and just you know sort of absorb this information uh, you know for FRT, but also just if you're interested in owning any sort of REITs with retail exposure. Uh, obviously, these numbers will vary from company to company, but uh, they do paint a uh, you know pretty clear and understandable picture of uh, you know what the industry looks like at the end of July 31st for FRT. And scrolling down here, this this just kind of shows their pipeline. Uh, you know, they do have some mixed use developments that are in the way that uh, you know they expect to either to finish the product the project in the in the coming years. Uh, the, you know, you can see these are large and beautiful buildings. This this is the type of uh, assets that this company owns. The company also redevelops. Um, Properties, they like to sort of buy uh, properties that are adjacent to properties that they own, fix those up, and therefore increase the likely cash flows from both properties. Uh, that is a kind of a long-standing strategy that Federal Realty has that uh, I really like and we really like at iREIT. Um, you know, it's sort of it, it by doing that, they not only increase the cash flows, but they, they increase the values of both properties that they own by, uh, you know, buying and fixing up one. Um, this talks about their balance sheet here. This company is known for a wonderful balance sheet. As you can see, FRT has uh, roughly $1 billion in cash on hand, and they have another $1 billion uh, available in their undrawn credit facility. Uh, they have an average interest rate uh, of 3.53%, average um, maturity waiting here of nine years. Uh, as you can see here, their debt maturity is spread out pretty well. They do have roughly... Two billion dollars worth of debt coming due in the next uh, four years. However, this is covered by their available liquidity. Uh, you know, typically they're able to pay down their debt and things like that with cash flows. But with the 76% rent collection, they probably will struggle some in that regard. But they do have the balance sheet to sort of get them through. Uh, you know, their debt needs, their dividend needs, and uh, everything else uh, in the meantime until their sort of rent collection increases back to where it was. This is a you know, an important chart here. This is the last one I'll show before I get into the valuation. Uh, a lot of the time when I talk about investing in equities, I talk about the importance of their management teams. And when you're buying a stock, uh, in my opinion at least, you're essentially buying their management team. These are the people that are in charge. They're making decisions. They're, uh, those decisions will lead to, uh, you know, cash flows or the lack thereof, sales, the lack thereof, just in general performance. Uh, their CEO, Don Wood, uh, joined the company in 1998 and became the uh, CEO in 2003. And as you can see here, since 2003, FRT has generated 10.3% annualized returns, which is better than the S&P 500 and much better than its shopping center REIT um, sort of competitors. So, you know, this, uh, like the past, doesn't necessarily predict future returns. However, Don Wood has done a wonderful job, and uh, a lot of times I like to say that excellence never happens on accident. Uh, his leadership and the systems that he has put into place, um, you know, they, they do sort of have created a culture of success here, and I do uh, expect that FRT and its leadership team will be able to not only navigate the COVID environment, but continue to grow, uh, you know, and, and produce, you know, uh, high returns after this. So with regard to these uh, high returns historically, you see that FRT has been uh, usually a very, very richly uh, evaluated stock. As you can see here, over the last uh, decade or so, the company's a uh, little more than a decade, probably 12 or 13 years here, dating back to uh, 2006. The average price uh, per adjusted funds from operations ratio is nearly 28 times. Uh, that is uh, very high, obviously, a lot of REITs tend to trade in the 17 to 20 times range, and those are blue chips. You know, we're talking realty income, those types of REITs. This is even higher, but as you can see, uh, it is, it has, you know, it did, in 2009, it struggled, but generally speaking, the company has generated very reliable bottom line growth. We see in 2017, there was a little hiccup here uh, last year as well. The company is interest rate sensitive, and it's also sensitive to, um, sort of the macro trends in the retail space and its investment cycle. But uh, just overall, it does has historically generated a very reliable returns. You can't have a 53-year year dividend increase streak without, uh, you know, reliable bottom line growth. 
Uh, so with that said, we see that 2020 is hurting the stock quite a bit. This negative 27% performance will be its worst annual performance in, uh, you know, in, in quite some time. And with that said, the stock is trading at a large discount down here in the roughly 19 times range. It sort of bottomed out in the like, you know, 15 to 17 times range here earlier in the year. So, it, um, but at this large discount, as you can see, the, since you, you got a chance to buy the stock at a discount here in the Great Recession, and now you're getting a chance here in the COVID environment. However, in basically the entire period in between the stock traded at a very high multiple you know peaking out here in the roughly 37 times range in uh, 2016 so we're at a huge discount from its you know its all-time highs here we're at a still huge discount from its sort of average in this range and uh, I really like the fact you know it's, it's not necessarily cheap here at 19 and a half times not super cheap it's not bargain barrel as you can see in the Great Recession it traded for as low as uh, you know less than 13 times but being that investors have had so few opportunities to buy shares of this dividend king at a discount, um, I have been taking advantage of this uh, sale recently, and I think that sort of anybody that's interested in high yield, a, which appears to be pretty safe, as you can see, uh, FRT's dividend is 5.18% right now. Throughout this period, we were talking 2 to 3% yields, so very low for a REIT. Now it actually offers a pretty attractive yield for a REIT, especially in a low interest rate world. Um, so to me, you know, like I said, this has created a wonderful opportunity for income-oriented investors. It's a rare opportunity. Through all these years, I was really hoping to own this company, and I just never had the chance. And so in 2020, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I've bought shares. I'm adding to them pretty much every month when I reinvest my dividends. I buy a few more shares of Federal Realty. Um, you know, that's not going to be a huge, a fast grower, but the, you know, it's high yield combined with reliable growth. And the likelihood for multiple expansion back towards its historical mean, uh, in my opinion, you know, does generate quite a bit of a future return potential in the short term. I'll discuss that quickly, and then we'll end the video. So as you can see, assuming it does, the company's uh, FF, AFFO does bounce back to the 420, you know, to 470 range in the coming years. You know, uh, the company does have the ability to generate, uh, you know, solid returns. The long term, I actually need to add the long term. So the long term line here is at uh, 27.9 times. We'll see that will be at the top of this bottom range once it shows up. There it is. Um, I don't necessarily think this is likely that FRT is going to trade at this point at this level in the near future. But if it was to trade um, at that level by the end of next year, we'd be talking roughly $120 a share. Um, assuming you know the analysts are correct with this four dollar and twenty cent uh, earnings um, AFFO, you know generation potential, but you know so that would be returns of roughly thirty four percent. I think something in like the twenty one to twenty two times range is more likely in the short term. That would represent multiple expansion from here, as sort of the the market sentiment improves and, and the company's cash flow generation sort of becomes more clear, but. As you can see, that would still be you know a ten ten and a half percent annualized total return at uh, twenty one times at twenty two and a half times we'd be talking uh, annualized return rate of returns of nearly sixteen percent. Moving out to twenty twenty two, we'd be looking at you know once again fifteen and a half percent here at the twenty two times and uh, roughly twelve and a half percent here at the uh, twenty one time. You know if we were to go back to the long term average, we'd be looking at twenty five percent annualized returns here. But even at these 12 to you know 15 and a half percent times, uh, you know if you're able to compound money at a at a teens clip like that in the double digits, you're going to uh, you know become rich fairly quickly. That's that's how the the stock market uh, can allow you to sort of climb social ladders. Uh, you know your job's not going to give you raises like that any t in most years unless you're uh, you know very lucky. But uh, that sort of compounding over the long term is what uh, creates real wealth. And so uh, uh, when I'm looking at dividend growth companies, I'm looking at names with reliable income streams so that in the meantime, while I wait for this multiple expansion to happen, I get paid uh, generously. And in this case, at a roughly 5.2% yield, that is uh, certainly the case. I think this yield is safe. And um, so, you know, I'm going to be paid roughly 5% while I wait for these double-digit returns to take place. Uh, by buying low here, I'm putting myself in a wonderful opportunity and uh, you know like I said if you're interested in owning REITs if you like the real estate market 
And if you like, uh, you know, dividend aristocrats and even better dividend kings, I think that Federal uh, Realty is a company that, uh, you know, deserves consideration for uh, your dividend growth portfolio. So with that in mind, that's going to wrap up today's video. I thank you for stopping by. Uh, I wish you happiness. I wish you health. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.